Good and sad. What are you doing, Bev? Um, removing the fair lead. I've got bent bolts, which is what we suspected. Um, part of it's to do with the way the deck's laid up. Uh, there's a screw very, very close to one of the bolts, and it meant I couldn't get a nut on it, and that's the one that's bent the most. So I'm going to take them all out, have a good think, and I'll worry about it all after that. Well, Beverly and I are up on stilts. So, um, luckily we haven't got very much to do, um, but um, we've got an engineer coming to have a look at our sail drive leg tomorrow. And we will see, Beverly still thinks it's a grumbly bearing, um, but that will be tomorrow's job. As for now, I've just got, uh, I'm not going to be able to use this sink because you have to use um, buckets. So I'm going to get rid of the seal round here and um, put in a new one. Uh, well, I finally got the broken screw thread thing out. So, oh, it's one place it's going. Oh, what I really need. Oh, it's just to set bolt upright instead of being hunched over like Quasimodo. I've been bent double for far too long. Um, for those of you with any interest, the problem with the bolt was that it had broke off at deck level and it was in the thing, but it had penetrated through enough that I could grab underneath with a pair of mole grips, vice grips. And so I basically turned the whole screw using vice grips until it screwed its way out through the bottom of the anchor locker and then I was able to just lift it off the chain and throw it in the bin. But God, when it's bent up over backwards and you can't see what you're doing and you can only turn it from there to there, on each grip and you have to keep locking and relocking. I think it probably took about two hours to remove two of them until well they're out so I can now fill the whole well I can clean the whole thing up I can now refill the holes with epoxy putty and then the fair lead can be re-drilled back into its proper place and hopefully fingers crossed that will be that. In case you um, haven't already seen it this was the uh, basic problem it's a nice bent bolt. Um, We've got another bolt that was next to it that's not quite as bent, whereas bolt number three is still straight. So, got a good selection there. But we'll buy some more of these, get the fair lead in, and hopefully that'll be it for, well, hopefully forever, but at least another couple of years. It also goes to show you how much stress a fair lead like this conducts down into the body of the boat. And I've heard people say, oh, well, I never use fair leads because, it, you know, I always put my ropes over the side. Well, you can do if you want, but if you put it somewhere else in the boat, that stress is going into part of the boat that's not built for it. And there's enough stress going in here to bend three steel M8 bolts. So it's a matter of choice. On this boat, we're going through the fair leads and that's the way we're doing it because replacing a boat is a lot, replacing a bolt is a lot easier than replacing part of the boat. Even if it is a pain for two hours every three years. Well, I've masked up um, where I need to seal, and all I've got to do now is uh, get the sealant and uh, get on with this little job. Bevy's been doing all the outside and I'm doing the inside. <laughs> it's a good thing because it was a pretty roasty day today. Uh, the noise we're hearing uh, in the engine compartment, I don't know if you can hear it, it's like a little rattle and there's a little bit of play in... Um, the prop not much of a prop but can you hear it i can make it quite roughly and this is the sound that we're hearing um now uh what the engineer said is that the only way uh, to see if it is a bearing is to get rid of the oil and then basically see if there's any magnet or metal um particles in the oil so that's what we've done and this is our oil. I'm pretty convinced it was clearer than that. Uh, but what we're going to do is get a magnet and then we'll know for sure. So Beverly, um, what's the outcome of our little investigation? Inconclusive would probably be the simplest expression. Um, there's nothing obviously wrong, but there is obvious signs of wear. The mechanisms are 20 years old. It's that simple. The most obvious signs of wear is the splines on this shaft um, here. Um, also, this cone has had um, been de-threaded at some point and been tapped and dyed. Um, but I'm beginning to wonder... Uh, got this, uh, rag here. I'm beginning to wonder if this, this bushing is maybe the, the culprit. 
Yeah. You know, if it needs... Because there's not a lot of grease around this. This is fairly grease-free. And if this was rubbing, if, if the prop was turning that, or this was locked and the prop was turning against it, mm. that could make noise. Mm. Wouldn't do it any good. So I think this is going to get a good liberal coat of grease. It feels a bit rough. Um, there's just nothing here, really. Um, you just stop talking for a few seconds. Till the hurry plane goes away. Basically, yeah. <laughs> this might be a job for a parts cleaner. Uh. <laughs> Bloody difficult, but go on. You're in the yard. Um, I know. So, there's not a lot of grease on this. And, um, <laughs> I think we'll call it quits there for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we've just run a magnet over this to see if there's any metal particulates. And um, although it is dark, there are no metal particulates. So we've ruled out a, um, you know, basically bearings going, um, but really there are what I would class as uh, cogs. So for instance, the prop, it, it doesn't quite mesh now. Um, where on where the, on the splines? Where on the splines. Not, so not the shaft splines, the prop splines. Yeah, so the, the shaft splines are fine, but the prop spline have got some wear on it. Um, the bushing has got a little bit as you know it's got no grease on it whatsoever so there's sort of like what I would call little niggly things rather than big big issue or big trouble and with that oil looking as dark as maybe it's as simple as we just need to change that to the oil maybe that oil has now become too thin exactly so by doing all these things at least it will put our mind at rest and you know, we want Salty Lass to be the best boat because it's ours. And if there's still something wrong after we've done all that, then that's that's a different problem. Yeah, but it sounds like it's more to do with uh, just wearing things out. <laughs> Poor baby, it's getting a little older. So what are you doing, boss? <laughs> um, prevaricating a bit, but what I'm supposed to be doing is weighing anodes. Um, We've got two anodes. This is one that we took out last year and it looks a bit crusty, but to be honest, if you sand it with a bit of sandpaper, it comes up with a nice metal shine, as you can see, if I just twist it around a bit. Um, the shop did, in the yard here did not have the correct anode for us, so what I've done is I've wed last year's anode and the anode we took off yesterday. And um, one was literally 20 grams heavier than the other, so they're near enough the same. They're about half a kilogram. Um, but the other one was slightly heavier, so it's the one that's going back on. So when I say the other one, I mean the one that is the one I took off a couple of days ago, rather than the one I took off last year, is slightly heavier. Um, so it's going back on. It's going to get um, a good sandpapering, and then it's getting screwed back onto the sail drive, and we'll just use that anode. It's still fairly good order. We should get another year out of it because it's only had about eleven months, and um, we'll just have to order up another spare. If you've been watching us for some time, you will know that last year we painted our aluminium prop with Trilux. And a lot of people said, oh, you shouldn't antifile your prop. And a lot of people said, no, I do mine all the time. Well, the results are in. Last year, this area here, the low speed area of the prop was completely covered with barnacles, a huge mat of them. And it caused a lot of turbulence and a lack of power. This is the prop one year later with the Trilux on. And as you can see, there is not a barnacle in sight. We have lost a couple of little bits of Trilux here and there, but they're gonna get touched up and that's all well and good. Um, oh, that's nice, it's gone quiet. Um, shouldn't have said anything. Right, uh, the other thing is when we took the oil out yesterday, we commented it looked a bit dark, but pouring the oil in today, it looks pretty dark because I think it's just a dark oil, so. Um, Volvo did originally say to use automatic transmission fluid with this, but then it changed its mind and said use 1540, same as your engine, and that's what we put in. So this is all done, it's all sealed, ready to go. The anode is on, and as you can see, it's got a bit of shine back on it again, I'm glad to say. Um, we're ready to splash. The only problem with uh, doing the touch-ups is um, the only antifile I've got is the Trilox. So uh, Salty Lass looks a little bit like a Dalmatian now, the poor girl. 
but it just adds to her unique charm. Are you happy, Bev? Um, we've run the engine after doing what we've done and the noise that was bothering me has gone. So I'm convinced more than ever it's the spacer between the prop and the sail drive. It's been very, very heavily greased with marine grease and new oil in the sail drive, greased everything, everything checked up. Um, it all sounds a lot better than it did. So as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> jobs are good. Anyway, we're in here now. Um, the wind is from that way. We had hoped to get the sails up, doesn't look like it's going to happen, but you never know. We could get an evening lull. But for now, it's get the boat fixed up again because she's, like any time in the yard, everything gets chucked everywhere at a random basis because you're running about, doing everything dead quick. Now we've got the time to put everything right. Yeah, I mean, so we're only in the yard, what, two days? And the, and the boat just feels like it's... Um... Last time we were in for three and a half weeks and the boat was like a disaster zone for about a month afterwards. At least now it's only two days and it still needs a bit of a fix up. Right, well, let's get on with it. 